I must first warn that this is definitely a nitpickish version of the series and made specially for those who want a greater mathematical accuracy than what the rest of the series contain. If you are interested in mathematical foundations for probability when combined with uncountable infinite sets, such as the real line, uh, the video may be just what you want. If on the other hand you feel you are not in that crowd, I recommend heading to the next video. It's much more down to earth and will probably make a lot more sense. Just as for the previous mathematical clip, I've made a video um, page available uh, there. In this video, I'll introduce probability in the axiomatic way, uh, as introduced by Kolmogorov. The reason for that is that we sometimes need to deal with probabilities of continuous outcomes and continuous families of models. Now, before starting, I need to stress that this approach, uh, which allows for very general mathematical usage, may often be a case of shooting a sparrow with a cannon. Also, when approximating something gradual but finite with something continuous, you may be falling into a mathematical trap. It's easy to get enormed with uh, mathematical tools such as real analysis and uh, calculus. This concepts are very useful, but sometimes the concepts involved do not quite map into the real world, where things are gradual, but uh, not necessarily infinitely divisible. One example of this is the so-called Gabriel's trumpet, which is simply the surface you get when you rotate the function f of x equal to 1 over x around the x-axis. This mathematical entity has a finite volume, but an infinite surface area. Which is a weird attribute, but a mathematical such. However, uh, as a problem, it's stated as you can fill the entire inside with a finite amount of paint. But you can't paint the surface. And this is where uh, mathematical idealization stops working. For a real world liquid uh, isn't something that can be squeezed into any shape or form and will fill that shape perfectly. It's made of molecules that would have been stuck in the trumpet at a finite distance. Normally, a continuous approximation to liquids will not get you into trouble. But you can make examples such as Gabriel's trumpet where it will. The real world seems to be made of finitely divisible compounds rather than ideal real valued shapes. However, a continuous approximation can be often far superior to the full description for a lot of problems. You don't want to describe the state of the weather using atomic theory and quantum physics, for example. Probabilities on a real line and on larger dimensional spaces need special consideration though. You can run into several difficulties when describing probabilities in such realms. First off, you want to avoid taking probabilities or other measures on every possible set. Mathematical ma measure theory does, however, give us a description of what sets to consider. This collection of sets, uh, i.e. a set of sets, needs to be a so-called sigma algebra, which means that it's not empty, and that's the first uh, rule. Uh, rule 2, if a set is in the sigma algebra, then so is the complement. And number 3, if the sets in a series, finite or countably infinite, is in the sigma algebra, then so is the union of those sets. Uh, and if we define such a set of sets over the universal set, let's call it omega, we can do the basic set theoretical operations, complement, unions and intersections, a countable number of times and still be inside that set of sets. This is a good attribute to have when we want to consider probability, since we definitely want to do such operations. With such a set of sets, we can make a so-called probabilistic measure on it, meaning a function of each possible set, E, with the following attributes. Uh, 1. The probability of E is greater than or equal to 0. 2. The probability of the anti-universal set is equal to 1. That is the probability over all 
possible elements. Number three, the probability of E1 union, E2 union, and so forth, is equal to the sum of the probabilities of each set. Uh, when this collection of sets uh, EI are disjoint, with these properties, the probability will lie in the closed interval from 0 to 1, which was the uh, rule number 1 in the previous presentation. Also, rule number 2 and 5 can be deduced from this set of axioms, while rule 4 is directly connected to axiom 3. Axiom 3 is a bit wider though, as a countable infinite set of disjoint sets can be considered. For finite sets, there are only a finite number of subsets, so in such cases there's no difference. But when handling sets such as the real numbers, a rule like this needs to be considered in order to make the theory meaningful. Only rule 3 from the previous presentation is missing. Uh, the reason is that conditional probability hasn't yet been defined. Often in an axiomatic probability theory, rule number 3 is thought of as a definition, not a part of the initial building blocks of the system. Note also that for real valued outcomes, the interpretation that probability is equal to 1 is called almost certain rather than certain. Imagine that you can pick a random real number uniformly between 0 and 1. There's an uncountable amount of such numbers, so the probability of picking one is exactly equal to zero. Yet, if such an operation could be performed in the physical world, and I will argue that it can't, you will still get some number. So it's possible to get outcomes with probability zero, indeed you will get one such outcome. If you wonder what initial probability to assign to a proposition in the Bayesian setting, you may therefore wonder if you should contemplate assigning the value 0 or 1, even though you are not entirely certain that it's true or false. However, if you are uncertain about such assignments, the proper Bayesian way to handle this is to assign a probability measure onto that probability. I will hopefully deal with the situation in a later clip, but the, uh, the result can be stated here. If you are absolutely uncertain about the probability P of a proposition A, you can derive a probability distribution uh, based on symmetries. There are, unfortunately, at least two candidates, but they have this in common. They are symmetric and around uh, P equals to uh, one half. And they have the quality that uh, probability of 0 uh, strictly less than p strictly less than 1 is equal to 1. So, in words, it's almost certain that a is not almost certainly true. And it's almost certain that a is not almost certainly false. And it's almost certain that you wish you didn't start watching this video now. Well, not really, I hope. Uh, the concept of almost certain can be quite useful in some instances. One example is the law of large numbers, which says that the ratio of independent events with a certain underlying probability rate will converge toward that uh, rate with probability 1. Also, there is the Bayesian convergence of opinion theorems, which state that under some conditions, the posterior probabilities will converge when the amount of data increases, with probability 1 towards the truth. And that's for any uh, prior probability which uh, spans uh, the true values. I think I will illustrate this by an example where some of the conditions are not fulfilled though. Anyway, in later videos I will study how the probabilities are changed when new information arrives. The strict inequalities that I will derive will be shown for definite uh, initial probabilities lying in the probabilistic realm that is 0 strictly less than p strictly less than 1. These inequalities will also be true for an uncertain initial probability with the above mentioned attributes, namely that the probability of 0 being strictly less than p string being strictly less than 1 is equal to 1. 
When you integrate over continuous likelihoods and prior distribution functions having such an attribute, it doesn't matter if you include the endpoints or not. So, that's it for now. Hope you've got something out of it.